Coming up next, I'm going to reveal seven new jobs that speak to our current culture. And then a 28-year-old turned her side hustle into a million-dollar business. And, of course, a fun hashtag I quit segment. And we will take your calls. It starts now. All right, folks, welcome to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you win at work and in life. Yes, in both. More income, more impact. Greater amount of money, greater amount of meaning in your work. That's why we are here. Let's dive into it. I want to prepare you for the future. Seven new jobs that reveal where we are headed in the future in the world of work. One of the things we've been talking about a lot on the show is the disparity between the amount of jobs that are available in the United States right now, which is somewhere between 10 and a half to 11 million, and how many people are unemployed, which is somewhere in the 8 million range. There's still a big gap, employment gap, and it's driving incomes up, salaries up, hourly wages up. And as you'll remember last week, if you're a regular on the show, we had in the chief economist from uh, ZipRecruiter. And the bottom line is, is that the pandemic spun off, created a lot of jobs that didn't exist. That's why we are where we are. Okay. So here are seven jobs that we pulled from uh, a lot of research from Business Insider. They highlighted jobs that will be in high demand this year, 2022. And then what does it say about our future? Okay. And so we're just going to pull seven uh, these range from behavioral health to cybersecurity. So here we go. And then I'm going to tell you what this means about our culture and where we're headed and then how this affects you as you prepare yourself for the jobs of the future. Because some of you, let's just be honest, are in jobs, even career fields right now, that are going to change substantially. And it doesn't have to be, ah, chicken little, you can be ready for this and, and make the move. So here we go. The first one is behavioral health technician because this involves working with people who have behavioral disorders and here's again this is great news listen this doesn't require a super specific expensive degree you are being trained many times i did some consulting with a wonderful organization out of utah last year and they're hiring people all the time that just have great people skills and then they train them on how to provide in-home care for kids that have behavioral disorders. That You think about this, the stress it puts on families, the stress it puts on teachers. And so this is, again, a very specific skill that can be trained. Behavioral health technician. A lot of times this is, again, in-home or in a clinic-type environment, and there are specific therapies and activities that these type of people are uh, uh, distributing, our offering, if you will. Uh, next is, number two is customer success specialist. Now, this is not customer service. Some of you are going, oh, they got fancy with the title. Well, not really. This is a this is a, a spinoff of your traditional customer service person who may be sitting in a room taking calls or online chats and helping customers get solutions. This is customer success specialist, and this is long-term relationship building. Uh, think of this as a customer advocate, client liaison. Think of those words because that's the role. Customers are spending many, many times millions of dollars, big corporations, and the corporations want to keep these customers happy. Well, so you've got the salespeople who are involved in the initial sale, but they're out focusing on more sales. So a customer success specialist, think about it. They're at the line of communication between the company and the, and the customer. They're, they're the liaison, making sure everybody's on the same page. Proper communication, healthy communication is happening for a healthy relationship. Advocating for the client. Hey, this went wrong, and they're the one internally that they're kicking butt and taking names. Make sure the customer's being served. Number three, vaccine specialist. I... Never mind. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Uh, but this is the world that we're in now, and vaccines are bigger and more prevalent, and I think it's going to be an everyday, every year thing. Uh, and so a vaccine specialist is involved in supporting 
support role here. So we're talk, talking production, distribution, and patient education. Vaccine specialist. Number four, machine learning engineers. Now, these folks are developing and uh, implementing uh, self-running artificial intelligent algorithms and systems, right? So AI, artificial intelligence, technology, this is the new wave. Well, what happens when AI starts misbehaving or something's not clicking right? So these machine learning engineers are equipped with monitoring, fixing, guiding these systems because I'm telling you folks, this is only going to continue. I mean, in fact, I, I don't think we even realize how much we interact with artificial intelligence now in, in a given day. So there you go. All right, next, number five, talent acquisition and, excuse me, talent acquisition specialist. Uh, let me tell you what this is. This is a really cool title for a new position in HR, which is, uh, we got to recruit, baby. We need talent. And see college football, college basketball, uh, they got guys that they get hired for coaching. And honestly, they get hired because they're really great in the living room. They can sit down with mom and dad and the kid and convince a kid to sign with them. That's what this is. Number six, postpartum nurses. These are nurses that provide physical and emotional med medical care to mothers and newborns following birth. Number seven, chief people officer. Again, uh, this is a good position. I like talent acquisition specialists. I like chief people officers. Why? Because I say this all the time as the man of the people, you people are the greatest asset to a company. A leader, no matter how many leadership books or classes or podcasts or conferences they go to, no matter how much leadership skill they develop, let me just tell you something. Leaders are limited by the people that they attract, acquire, and retain. This is that simple. How good is Bill Belichick without Tom Brady? Oh, there we go. Just think about it. I never saw Phil Jackson coach without Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Horace Grant, or Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant. I'm not taking anything away from Phil Jackson. I'm just saying I'd like to see Phil Jackson coach the Pacers. I'm just, I'm just saying. People are what make companies go. All right, so what is all of these seven positions, what do they reveal about where we are? That automation and efficiency is going to be a game changer for companies. It's all about how do we integrate artificial intelligence, technology for driving efficiency. Companies care about this. Number two, companies are paying closer attention to emotional needs. You saw the postpartum nurse. You're seeing chief people officer. And then the third takeaway, none of those required specialty degrees. College is becoming more and more irrelevant. That's the big takeaway. Now, coming up, we're going to dive into the news about a story of a side hustle that turned into a million dollar plus business and Dolly is stepping it up. You were created to fill a unique role in and through your work. Now, some of you may be going, I have no idea what that is. Some of you may be saying, I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to get there. I felt all of those emotions. I've been where you are, and I can tell you, there's hope. That's why I wrote the book, From Paycheck to Purpose. You can make the income you want and the impact that you desire, and I know that you have what it takes. folks helping you get unstuck so that you can work on purpose make more money and experience more meaning this is the ken coleman show thrilled to be coming to you uh, ken coleman.com great website of resources a lot of free resources some paid i want to mention this very quickly we're going to dive into our news segments we have three new free 
resources at KenColeman.com. One is how to network the right way. How do you turn connections into opportunities? The second one is how to stand out at your new job. We're going to help you win the first 90 days. How do you stand out? So from day one, you're starting to outpace everybody else. And then the third new resource, all of these are free, is the personal brand survey. Do you know what your personal brand actually is? Ooh, ooh, I don't know. It's good. Awareness is huge. Those are three new resources, all free, KenColma.com. All right, it's time to dig into the news. Headline reads from CNBC, how I turned my training side hustle into a million dollar business. I read this over the weekend. I think I fired it to Alex, the producer. I said, we got to talk about this. This is a great stinking story. This is why I get out of bed in the morning. Besides the great coffee. You know, somebody on the team asked me today, like, how many cups of coffee do you have every day? I guess I'm walking around with coffee all the time and I keep going, well, I'm coming to the meeting, but I got to get a cup of coffee first. I, it made me do some self-awareness. Turns out my personal brand is Ken likes the coffee in meetings. But for inquiry minds, I usually only have three to four a day and never after lunch. That's fairly healthy, yes? Amanda, no? You think you need to cut back on a cup? All right, we'll get to that later. How I turned my training side hustle into a million-dollar business. Uh, this is Kat Norton. She's fantastic. I love the story. Here's the here's I'm going to read just quick portions of the article. This is a great story. One day I was on the phone with my best friend Anna. We were tossing around side hustle ideas that I could leverage from the four years I spent teaching Microsoft Excel. Suddenly a light bulb hit. I could post many Excel lessons on TikTok. I'm going to break this down in a second. This story is so chock full of real lessons. She goes, little did I know that the idea would lead to a, fine, a fun side hustle that would eventually turn into Miss, M-I-S-S, -S, Miss Excel, my successful full-time Excel training business. Today, it has grown to more than 1 million followers across TikTok and Instagram, and has brought in more than $1 million of Excel courses. I'll break those down for you in a moment. So here's what she did. Now, I want you to listen to this. And I want you to look at yourself and go, this side hustle idea you've been kicking around, you think it's so daggum intimidating? I want you to listen to this. Timeline. I posted my first video on TikTok in June of 2020. Then I began posting one TikTok a day. By my sixth TikTok video, the CEO of an IT company sent me a message saying he loved my fun teaching style and wanted to pay me to create Excel training videos for his clients. While working my nine to five, keep in mind, she has a nine to five job and hustling on other side projects, I continued posting Excel videos on TikTok every day. Now, I got to pause for a second and address the boomers. I love the boomers. My mom and dad are boomers. Joe's a boomer. These are TikTok videos. This is done on your phone, and these are less than 60 seconds. This is not lights and giant cameras and production staff and tens of thousands of dollars. It's a TikTok video, boomers. Don't be so scared. Uh, you know what? I'll pick on my generation. You Gen Xers out there that are terrified of TikTok. It's not hard. Uh, she goes on, by October, I'd grown my social media audience to 300,000 followers. My videos are going viral. The next step I decided, listen, would be to build out online courses to sell directly to consumers via her website. Now, watch what she did. She was doing something super quick and easy and fun and free. Did you hear it again? I'm going to say it again. Quick, easy, fun, and and free. Let me say it again, because that's worth being here to watch the whole show. Quick, easy, fun, and free. And she just put it out there and she let people test it. She let people try it. I, I talked about the, the beauty of the sample at Costco. I'm a sucker for a sample. So are a lot of people, right? I'm walking along. I see the nice old lady with the hairnet on 
And she goes, would you like a cracker with some cheese? I go, sure, I'll take the free sample. And then I buy the cheese. Th that's all this is, folks. So she then goes, wait a second. People like my crackers and cheese. I should bottle the cheese. I should box the crackers. That's what she did. And she created an online course. Boom. Watch this. She then takes her vacation two weeks off and she filmed over 100 videos, not TikTok videos per se, 100 videos for the course. Now this is the hard work. She does 100 videos and she packages them and she calls it, you ready for this? The Accelerator, right? Accelerator with Excel in it course. Since leaving her job, you're ready for this? She's made more than a million dollars in Miss Excel sales. In October of 2021, she crossed a major milestone making, ready for this, $100,000 in a day. Her individual courses range from $44 to $397. And then she sells course bundles. So she's got all these individual courses. Then she's bundling them from $397 to $997. Folks, if that doesn't inspire you, I you need to go see your cardi cardiologist. Your heart ought to be going, wait a second. I can test it. I can test it. And it doesn't cost me anything but time. Anything but time. All right, next story. Studying nine to five, Dollywood to pay 100% tuition and books for employees. This is from USA Today. By the way, Joe and I had the distinct privilege. We had Dolly Parton on, do you remember, for the very first version of the Ken Coleman Show back at WDUN? Yes, I do. Shout out to my home station where I started and the first station to syndicate the Ken Coleman Show. They're listening now. Uh, we had Dolly on that show. And she was on, jo uh, Joe, as I recall, to announce the giant renovation and relaunch of Dollywood, and it is spectacular. It was wonderful. And I'm going to brag on Dolly. Listen to this. Leaders, pay attention. Dollywood employees working 9 to 5 or other schedules will soon be eligible for a new program paying 100% of tuition, fees, and books if they want to seek degrees or other educational opportunities. Um, the Grow You program offers workers more than 100 diploma, degree, and certificate programs from 30 different learning partners. It will also provide partial funding up to $5,200 a year for 150 other programs in hospitality, engineering, human resources, and art design. So it's not just a college degree. Dolly gets it. Dolly agrees with me. Here's what they said. This is a direct quote statement from the company. We want our hosts, this is what they call their employees, hosts. We want our hosts to develop themselves through advanced learning to fulfill the foundation and the company's other tenets. Care more, dream more, be more. That's fan-freaking-tastic. When our hosts strive to grow themselves, listen to this, it makes our business and our community a better place. Now, leaders, I'm speaking to leaders here. You want to know how to stand out, whether you're a small business of eight people, 80 people, or your larger business of 800 or 80,000 people. This is entrepreneur to corner office CEO. We are in the biggest talent war we've ever seen in the history of the United States. And one of the ways to attract the right talent and keep the talent is what Dolly is doing. Dolly Parton, you know what she's doing? She's giving them a ladder. For their future she's showing them a ladder for a better life if they work for her that works don't go anywhere coming up your calls next According to Glassdoor, the average job offer attracts over 250 applicants. So if you've made it to the interview, you've already made a great impression. So now is your time to showcase how you are the best choice for this role. That's why we created How to Win the Interview. This free guide will walk you through the five strategies to help you stand out amongst the competition. With just a little intentionality, 
you can prepare yourself to win the interview. To get it, go to kencoleman.com slash interview. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, helping you make greater income and greater impact in the same job. It is possible. There is a clear path to doing this, and we're helping you deal with some of the systemic problems, how education has rewired your brain, your kid's brain, to where you just wander to the next thing. Oh, I just want a good paycheck. Dealing with the scourge of horrible leadership in this country that you have to deal with. It's all affecting you. During the work week, 844-747-2577, before we get to the phones, did you know that we have launched something very special here at Ramsey Solutions? I, along with our chief technology officer and our Ramsey Ed department, through Ramsey Academy, a new venture, where we're going to train people for the jobs of today and tomorrow, and it doesn't take a college degree, and it's not going to cost you a fortune. Here's what we're doing. Project Management 101 is our first venture. Project Management 101. Why? Because we did our homework. Project Management is one of the hottest jobs, hottest uh, career paths. Through 2027, economists are expecting it to grow by 33%. It is versatile. It allows you to move from industry to industry. can give you a great ladder for career growth. And so that's why we're excited to launch the first ever Project Management 101 course alongside our Ramsey Chief Technology Officer, Brendan Wojko, who hires and leads all of our project managers here at Ramsey Solutions. I am joining him. We are together and we are teaching you this course. It is limited. We're only doing limited spots. So don't wait. Apply now. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash project. That's RamseySolutions.com slash project. Project, RamseySolutions.com slash project. All right, let's get to the phones. Monier joins us in Dallas, Texas. Monier, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi. How are Thank you? Thank you for taking my call. You bet. What's I'm up? I'm doing well on you. Well, I'm living uh, the yeah, dream. So. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So I'm trying to live the dream. Good. <laughs> and, I, wanna... um, I just want to get straight to it. Okay. Um, so I'm currently in Dave Ramsey's Baby Step 2, so I found you through him. Okay. Um, and I'm an unconventional accountant. So I have an undergrad degree in psychology, but I worked my way up into accounting. However, I did that to support myself because I lived in California, grew up in California, all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So now I know I've always wanted to work in medicine and I discovered the PA, you know, profession. And I started doing research and contacting people I know to get more information. And one of the things that's required is healthcare experience hours. So um, I'm trying to make the decision while I'm in baby step two as well uh, to determine whether or not I should leave my accounting position behind and start working towards like another medical position that would allow me to support myself while I'm preparing for PA school and also allow me to save in that realm. So that's kind of my question. Well, there's a lot wrapped up in there. What's the primary yeah. question that I can help you the my, most uh, on? So, um, I would say, should I leave my accounting position? And because I, I really don't want to be an accountant, I did it to support myself. So, um, in order to transition into the medical field and get that experience, as well as like in preparation for PA school. Yes, but absolutely. Also, I like you moving into the medical field because that's the proximity principle. You know, while you're getting trained to be a PA, if you can do, even if you were to do accounting work, which I know you don't love, but if even if you were able to do accounting work for a hospital or, or for a clinic, to me, it gets you in the building. And it's going to open up great opportunities for relationships and connections to get you a great gig once you're qualified to be a PA. So yes, but I want you to do it strategically. I don't want interruption of income. It's not worth it because you're very clear on what the mountaintop looks like, your dream job. And so I don't want you to uh, create unnecessary tension and stress for yourself financially. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. So I want to replace the income. If I'm going to leave accounting, that's fine, but I want to replace that income so that I can keep moving forward. But yeah, I, there's no reason if you can replace the income in something you enjoy more than accounting, it's a no brainer. Okay. For sure. Does that make Thank sense? You. Does that answer your question? 
Yes, yes, that's what I've been trying to figure out. <laughs> yeah, it, listen, it's all about the day job now, and the day job is what's preparing you for the dream job. So we just want to right. get the most enjoyable day job possible? Yeah, absolutely, go for it. Got okay. it? Sounds good. Hey, yeah, I'm excited all. for you. I'm Thank proud you. of you. Can I tell you, I just want to cheer you on for just a brief second before I let you go. You're really crushing it. You've got a great plan out there. And I want to give you uh, a copy of my book, From Paycheck to Purpose, best-selling book. And I want you to really focus in on stage three, which is Get Connected. Because in that book, we really do a deep dive on how to get you prepared for stage four, which is get started. You've already figured out stage one, get clear. Stage two, you're in the process of getting qualified. I really want you to focus on stage three while you're in stage two. Does it make sense? Sure. So I'm going to give you a copy of the book. How's that sound? Sounds great. Thank All right, you. Hang on the line. Amanda will get you whatever format you want. By the way, I just found out recently, the audio book of From Paycheck to Purpose is going bananas. And that is a function of people don't read as much anymore because of podcasting, because of, you know, on-demand audio, people are consuming books via audio. So uh, we do have the audio version of the book from Paycheck to Purpose. You can get it, of course, anywhere audiobooks are sold, but we've got it as well. So uh, that is very interesting. Uh, all right, let's go to Scott, who joins us now in Atlanta, Georgia. Scott, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I, so I see on my screen that this is uh, you uh, follow up from an Instagram question you asked me. Yes. Yes, I reached out a couple weeks ago to ask if I should leave my six-figure job to pursue a, a self-employment role, and your team responded back that I, I shouldn't do that uh, until I could you know, essentially replace my, my current income. By the way, that was not job. my team. That was me. I remember that. Ah, yeah, okay. by the way, when I do those Instagram Q&As, which, by the way, we have one going right now. It's called Ask Me Anything. I'm yeah. actually answering those. I just want people to know that. <laughs> Well, good to know. All right. uh, you responded uh, with that. And again, um, my current job is pretty demanding, and I don't feel like I have the bandwidth to really pursue a self-employment role in the off time, at least not to a level that would eventually rise to the to the pretty good salary I'm making. So my, my, really my question is, you know, would you have any advice on how I should proceed um, finding that time to really try to uh, pursue this uh, eventual self-employment yeah. gig? How many hours are you – have you started it? Yeah, I'm into my job full time. Oh, the no, side no, no. Gig? Have you started the side gig yet? Um, no, not really. Okay. Do you mind if I ask you what it is? Sure. Yeah, I'm looking at a consulting service uh, for folks to to directly to consumers to help them navigate uh, long term care, health care options, aging transitions. Oh, great. Whether they've been in the hospital. All right. Yeah. Do you know where you'd find potential customers? Have you thought through that, or do you already know that? Not necessarily. Yeah, that's the first thing. So my advice is you need to do your homework um, because it feels like to me you, you're very specific on this, which is awesome. So you know your why. But you need to figure out the what and the how, okay, and the where. So first is where are these people, where where are these people going? You know what problem you're trying to solve, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you know the solution, yes? Yes. Great. So you've got to figure out before even launch it as a side hustle, where are these people with that problem trying to figure out long-term long care strategy? Where are they congregating? Who are they going to? How would I get in front of them? Does that make sense? Yes. That's first thing. Second thing is, um, who's doing what you're doing now? I'd start studying them big time. What are they charging? Uh, what would you be offering that's different? How could you compete with it from a price standpoint? You got to know all that. And I don't mind you starting it on the side once you answer those questions because you're not relying mm -hmm. on it. So then it gets to the question you just asked me, how much time do I need to put into it? Well, I can't answer that for you, but you're going to have to go, okay, I got, it starts a consulting business. I don't care if it's, I don't care what the industry is. Consulting is all about, do I do a good enough job here that they A, retain me or B, they will recommend me. That's how you build that business. So your timeline how long it's going to take to, to build up full-time income to replace your day job right now, and how much time you'll have to put into it to be able to grow it, that answer will, it'll come to you on your own. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You got to start it. Go answer those questions, then launch this thing, and let's win one customer at a time and let it take over from there. Don't move. More of your calls coming up.
Do you know what you were born to do? In order to get hired at a job you love, you need to get clear on your talent, passion, and mission. That's why our team created the Career Clarity Guide. In just a few minutes, this free tool will walk you through a process to discover what you do best, talent, the work you love to do, passion, and the results you want your work to produce. That's mission. Then you're going to feel way more confident throughout the job search process. To get started, go now to kencolman.com slash clarity. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, helping you make more money and experience more meaning. The average American spends over 90,000 hours at work in their lifetime. Folks, come on. Some of you, the personal breakthrough in your life is going to happen when you finally enjoy yourself at work and you're not dragging home all that toxic garbage. That's why I'm here for you, 844-747-2577. Before I get back to the phones, for our viewing audience, and we got people listening on uh, terrestrial radio, which every time I say that, people go, what does that mean? That just means it's on your dial. AM, FM radio, Sirius XM, we're live now on Sirius XM. Uh, but we have viewing audiences from multiple channels, and one of the viewing channels is YouTube, and people are in the chat room right now. They're watching they're probably not working, but I'm okay. You're here. I'm glad you're here. Uh, just be ready to minimize that screen if the boss comes around asking for those TPS reports. I do not want to be the reason you get in trouble. Uh, but I got to go to a comment or two here. Earlier, I was talking about the story of the young lady who started posting TikTok videos on how to use Excel spreadsheets, which, by the way, that video, no matter how fun she did it, that would be the equivalent of me watching paint dry. That's how much I hate Excel spreadsheets. Just being honest. Uh, but Gary Spratt, who's a regular, love Gary. Uh, Gary said he was commenting on, uh, I was taking little little fun at uh, boomers and Xers. He says, FYI, there are tons of Gen Xers on TikTok. Becky R. jumped in and said, yeah, Gary, you're right. I'm on it now. Since I found out an attorney was giving trial recaps on TikTok. It's not just dancing videos anymore. Uh, and, and they're right. And by the way, I am on TikTok and Instagram. One thing you're never going to see is me dancing. You, you got to know who you are. And I can't dance. The world doesn't want to see me dance. And I know this. And therefore, I'm going to just stay in my lane. Good advice for everybody. All right, Joshua is up next in Columbia, Missouri. Joshua, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken, thank you for taking my call. You bet. What's up? Um, my ultimate question is, how do you get over the guilt of leaving a position that probably was in your passion, but chasing something that you thought it might have been in your passion and also had the the, the insight for a little bit more um, money as far as the salary goes? Well, this is just about forgiving yourself. So how do you get over the guilt? You have to reframe the entire narrative. So when somebody feels guilty, they feel guilty because they believe that they've done something wrong. True or false? True. So we have to define what wrong means. There's right and there's wrong. Then there is what I would call um, a mistake, a not so wise decision, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Uh, let me give an example. Uh, Joshua, I recently was attempting to stop a small leak in my house on the second floor. I've told the story on the show. I went up there with a little can of, uh, what was that stuff? Uh, thank you. Flex Seal. Love that guy's commercial. Guy tapes a boat back together. I'm buying that. So I'm up in my second floor, and I'm spraying this little nail hole leak. No big deal until I get the roofers out. And I walk back, Joshua, and I lose track of what I'm doing. I pay attention to the cap on the flex heel, and I stepped off of it and stepped through my living room ceiling and hurt my leg pretty bad. Didn't break anything. Now, should I feel guilty about that? What do you think? Probably not. No. Why? Why should I not feel guilty about that? move that I made. That was boneheaded for sure. Risky for sure. But why should I not feel guilty? 
because that's a mistake and you can learn from your mistake. There we go. So you made a mistake. You chased a bigger paycheck. You maybe didn't vet out the gig as much as you should have. Um, angry at yourself? Sure. Uh, fired up to never do that again? Sure. But guilt? No. No guilt. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And I appreciate that insight. Yeah. Uh, it makes me look at it at a different lens. I do appreciate that. No more guilt. Give yourself a break. Nothing. I thought he was slow clapping for a second, but there was a sound about, I thought, well, that was pretty good advice. I think I'll receive that. But he was a slow clapping. Uh, you know, look, folks, making a mistake, a decision that you would do over again, let that go. No regret, no guilt. Learn from it, filter it, and move forward. No guilt. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't break the law. No guilt. Stay tuned. More Ken Coleman Show coming up. Are you wondering if you should leave your current job or stay put? Well, you're not alone. That's why we created the Should I Quit My Job quiz. In just five minutes or less, this quiz will help you determine if you're at the right company and if you're in the right role. And if you need to make a move, you'll get practical steps to keep you moving forward. Folks, it's time to get unstuck. Life is too short not to do what you were created to do. Go take the quiz right now at kencoleman.com slash quiz. All right, folks, welcome back to The Ken Coleman Show, helping you make more income and make greater impact. Coming to you from our Ramsey Studios in Nashville. Um, and I, I, we've got a great live audience today. Uh, a bunch of teenagers just sat down. Uh, so that's always exciting, you know, as I try to make myself more relevant and cool. No, I kid. I'm not going to try to do that. It's impossible. The ship has sailed. Uh, but a great crowd out in the lobby and also really fun group in the chat room on YouTube. <laughs> so before we, I got to get back to this. I was talking about how no one should ever see me dance on TikTok, nor will they. And uh, somebody said I would pay real money to see Ken dance. And now, of course, I'm rethinking the whole proposition. Because if people are willing to pay to see me dance like a dad, and I and I, and I mean the the word dance is used loosely here for what I would be. I what I would call it is moving awkwardly. If people are willing to pay to see me move awkwardly, I can be bought. I'm just gonna put that out there. Uh, my kids, though, I got three teenagers. They would snuff that out quickly. They would get irritated. Um, and then I said, I hope these people aren't doing this at work. And people are going remote work. Jonathan pieces. I'm working. Marcilla says, love the show. Love you. I'm working remote. And then Gary Spratt, one of our regulars, it's his lunch hour. So I, I got a picture of Gary eating a tuna sandwich right now, watching this on his phone in the car. Gary, love you, man. Uh, Morgan Foreman says they call that self-awareness. Listen, I am self-aware that I should never be dancing uh, unless it's for the entertainment of friends and family. So there you go. Hey, uh, real quick, there's been a lot of buzz lately all over the Internet about this guy Phil from ZipRecruiter. Uh, here's what some people are saying. Anthony P. said, Phil sent me jobs that I was a great match for. So I knew something good was going to happen, and it did. That Phil sounds like somebody you want in your corner, especially for an easier, better job search. What job will Phil help you get? Find out at ZipRecruiter.com. That's ZipRecruiter.com. Coming up, for our viewing audience only, um, we have a fabulous, fun bonus segment called Hashtag I Quit. 194.7 million views of this hashtag. And sometimes people are doing some very creative, funny, and sometimes awful quits. They're quitting publicly. The girl who quit at Walmart was one of the most awkward things I've ever seen, but it was delicious. I couldn't turn my head away. Uh, so we've got some fun stuff coming up on that. But let's get back to the phones. 844-747-2577-LB. I like that. That's a cool name. What's your name? LB? What if it was the LB Coleman Show? I think it would be great. Fayetteville, Arkansas is where LB is. LB, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. What's up? Okay, LB. It's your resume. I think you're in an underground tunnel or we need a higher amount of G for you on your phone. Let's try that again. How bad? Is this better? Slightly. Let's go we'll try it again. Hold still. Hold it near your mouth. 
And if you're in a tunnel, come out of the tunnel. All right, let's try it again. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're live. The show must go on. Let's see if we can get LB a landline, some tin foil, a ladder to get out of the tunnel that he's in. I don't know. <laughs> let's see if we can help, help B. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to the chat room because as uh, fate would have it, uh, they are asking questions. So if you got a question or a comment you want me to jump into, here it is. Miranda B. writes in, Hey, Ken, why do you hate federal jobs? <laughs> whoa. whoa, whoa. Uh, I don't know that I've ever said I hate federal jobs. I don't think I've ever said that. I'm fairly certain that I've come just short of saying I hate the federal government. <laughs> I don't like big government. I don't like the way the government operates. And I don't know a whole bunch of people that do. But I didn't say I hate federal jobs. And I'm so glad you asked me that, Miranda, because here's what I do believe. I believe that all work that is legal and ethical is honorable. So I'm fine with you working for the federal government. If that's your jam and if it's in your sweet spot, I don't care who you work for. So I don't hate <laughs> federal jobs. I just get a lot of calls from people who are stuck in that federal mindset, that bureaucracy that is just like, oh, it's awful. Uh, jo Joseph Robertson, where's that one? Okay, here we go. Ken, is it a good idea to discuss a growth plan in an interview? Yes, I think it's a great question. Now, let me tell you what he's referring to. For those of you who are new to the show, I always teach people don't ever ask for a raise. Don't ever say, hey, how are you with him and Haw and set it up? Don't ask for a raise. Because what it does is it, it immediately puts the leader into a defensive posture. Many times the leaders aren't able to uh, authorize a raise anyway. And it just kind of creates an unnecessary yuckiness. Here's what I propose that you sit down, and the whole goal is to get a raise, but we sit down and say, hey, I'd love to talk to you about how I can grow in this company. Now, that's already a completely different posture. Understand that unless they're a complete bonehead, and some of you are working for boneheads, I will acknowledge that. But unless you're a bonehead, they're already going, okay, growth would mean, obviously, some compensation growth, too. So they already get that. But what you're then focusing on is, hey, what can I do? Are there some... some additional skills that I can add? Are there some areas where I've got some talent, but I need to really grow it and turn it into a sharpened skill? What can I work on? Because I want to become more valuable to the organization, to you as my leader, so that I can get more responsibility, watch this, more influence, and ultimately grow professionally and financially. Whole different posture. Now, so that's the context. So in the interview setting, I absolutely love the idea of when you get a chance to talk in the interview, go, hey, do you do more than annual reviews? Do you create an annual check-in on a growth plan? Does this company actively try to develop and promote? And, and, and do you think of things like, hey, uh, here's a growth path for you so that there is a ladder if you perform well. Is there a ladder at this company? That's how I would ask that question. And it's a great question and, and two reasons why. It's a great question. First, it makes you look prepared and insightful. Most people don't ask good questions in their job interview. Why? Because there's this cultural norm that we go, well, I've got to perform. The interview is all about how I look, how I sound, how I act. And, and, and that's just simply not the case. The interview ought to be 50% of you going, do I think this is a good fit for me? Like, you're not trying to get them to ask the question, pop the question. You're trying to go, should we even date? Is this a potential relationship? This is the mindset we've got to have for the job interview. But we don't. And as a result, we don't ask many questions. I tell the story all the time. Uh, as a Ramsey personality, there are so many support staff that that, I mean, we got social media team, writers, uh, designers, web programmers. A lot of people serve the mission of the Ken Coleman Show and everything that I'm doing. But I don't lead any of them directly. 
they all have leaders. But at some point, for somebody like an Alex, who is the producer of the show, he has a direct leader. But before we hired Alex, the producer, I got to interview him. And I, I remember interviewing a young guy several years ago to be my marketer. This is the guy that's going to market all of the stuff that I believe in. And I got to the end of the stuff I was going to ask him. And I said, hey, what questions do you have for me? True story. The guy does, does one of these numbers for you uh, listening audience. He looks up to the corner of the room, kind of pensive. And I go, okay, good. Good. The young man's processing a question. To which he then disappointed me by saying, no, I, I think I'm good. And I wanted to say, no, dude, you're anything but good. You're awful. There's no chance I'm going to recommend hiring you. You're going to sit down with me and talk about marketing? Storytelling is what marketing is? And you don't have any questions for me about why I do what I do? What am I most passionate about? What am I excited about? Why do I care about this? I mean, you don't have enough wherewithal to ask a good question. I don't want you. So remember this. That's my little rant. I think it's a great thing to ask Joseph. And the rest of you need to be doing the same thing. You need to be working that into the specific questions you're asking in a job interview so that you determine, is this a good fit for me? That's why you ask questions in the interview. And you'll look sharp. You'll look attractive as a candidate. All right. For our listening audience, I got to get out of here. You matter. You have what it takes. For our viewing audience, stay tuned. Hashtag I quits coming up next. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Thanks for listening to the Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman. All right, folks, welcome back uh, to the Ken Coleman Show, to our viewing audience. Thanks for hanging with us. We're going to get to hashtag I quit. I got a report that Miranda B. is happy with me. She appreciated my response. She now knows that I don't hate federal jobs. <laughs> All right, so uh, for you boomers that don't know what a hashtag is, it's the number sign in front of a phrase, and it's a way of grouping social media responses. I'm, I'm just kidding, sort of, kind of. I do that, by the way, Joe. If every live talk I give, if I make a comment about a hashtag, I got to take a shot at the poor boomers. You know, they 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 they, they can handle it. All right, so let's get to it. It's called hashtag I quit. All right, so here's how this works. Uh, this is we have picked. The team has. I've not seen these. So I respond to these in real time. I've not seen these pictures or videos. There are four TikTok videos we're about to go through. I've not seen these before, and that's because I like to comment on them real time. Uh, but the team has picked these up. This is, again, as I said, almost 200 million views of this hashtag on social media between uh, Instagram or TikTok. And a lot of times it's people just, they're quitting live or they're talking about what they're going to do when they quit. And so we like to have some fun with this. Uh, let's go. Let's go to the number one here. What do we got? When my boss asked why I put in my two-week notice. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think that's a little Kelly Clarkson, if I uh, remember correctly. Uh, because of you. And she cut it off. The nurse dropped the thing. Yeah, because of you. Now, see, again, I've said this before. I... This was, she didn't send this to the boss, right? This is just her going, this is my fun way of telling everybody that follows me, I'm out. Here, here's what it highlights. I've said this a million times. I'm never going to stop saying it. People don't leave companies. They leave leaders. I, I'm just going to tell you. And, and I don't want to make a leader feel bad right now. And it may be a big company-wide issue. And maybe they love you personally, but there are some cultural issues that you as a leader, their direct leader, haven't been able to deal with. And you may have a great relationship with us. So don't, don't take this too personal, but I want you to really grab the truth here. People leave leaders. 
They don't leave companies. They don't give a crap about the brand. They care about, are they seen? Are they heard? Are they valued? All right, let's go to the next one. Hey, boss. Just want to let you know I'm giving my two weeks notice, and uh, um, Friday after next will be my last day. Okay, well, well, sad to see you go, but thanks for letting me know. Two weeks later. Hello? Yeah, hi. Uh, your shift started 15 minutes ago. Why aren't you here? Because yesterday was my last day. It was? But you're, you're on the schedule. You're supposed to be here. I need you to be here. I gave my two weeks notice two weeks ago. I told <laughs> you that my last day was yesterday. I don't remember that. Oh, God. You need to be here or get somebody to cover your shift. I gave you the two weeks notice. You're the one that makes the schedule. You should have gotten it covered. Well, that's still your responsibility to get your shift covered, so you need to get here now. <laughs> I'm two hours away visiting my dying grandparents, so good luck. Well, good luck using us for a reference. Why, because you're an idiot? I guess I won't need to. Wow. Well done by the young man playing both sides of the fence there. Yeah, this is, I, I'm assuming this is true. Maybe it's a maybe it's a spoof. I don't think it is. I think he's probably going, this is what happened. And this is classic. Look at the selfishness of this leader. The dude quit. It's it's almost like he's like, are you hearing me? I don't work here anymore. You can't tell me to show up. You need to cover your shift. <laughs> what a moron. But this is it. I, I, the, the, let me tell you what that is. If that truly happened, if that truly happened, you have a leader who is, is, is exemplifying two major problems. Number one, incompetence. Incompetence. It's, it's on the leader. I mean, they turned in his two weeks. No, this is his last day. Incompetence first and then manipulation. All that leader was thinking about in that conversation is, I got a shift to fill. You got to fill it. Not, it, it. not any kind of human decency at all. It's pathetic. All right, next one. This is me one hour before I ask my boss for a raise. Oh, my God. I only have 20 minutes now. My hair is still a mess, and I've never asked for a raise before. I'm going to throw up, and I feel like now I'm just going to get fired. They're going to tell me no, and I'm out of a job. So <laughs> five minutes until I ask for the first raise in my entire life. <laughs> Wish me luck. I was hoping that we could revisit my compensation and see maybe even if there was a possibility for me to be a salaried employee. So I wanted to hear your thoughts. So I did not get the offer that I wanted and now I'm going to have to look for a new job. I asked for $35 an hour minimum. They said they could do $23 an hour, which is $3 more than I make right now. And my worth to this company has doubled, so... Don't stay somewhere that you're not appreciated. I'm gonna find something else. This is your Monday reminder not to stay anywhere that you're not appreciated, whether that be in a personal or professional relationship. Let me get this draft done. Bye. Okay, a lot going on there. A lot happening there. I don't know if these, see, the problem is, I don't know if these things are real. Is she really crying? Or was that like, because she did the before and the freaking out? Do you think that was real? She's really crying? Okay. Couple things, and, and and this is not just aimed at young people. She's a young person. This is aimed at people in general. Okay, you can't if you're making twenty dollars an hour, which she I I did some quick deduction here. They offered her twenty three an hour after she asked for a huge bump. You don't ask for a huge bump like that, unless you have some crazy evidence. That everybody else that you are that you work with that's doing the same thing you're doing is making that. That would be the only situation by which you could justify something that big of a jump. And here's what, here's what people don't understand. We live in this little cultural bubble where everybody gets their freaking feelings hurt when they are forced to confront facts. And if you are making 20 an hour and there's zero marketplace facts that somebody with your experience and your skill set makes $35 an hour when they tell you no, but they give you a $3 an hour bump, they don't devalue you. You can't make this leap to <laughs> go where someone loves you. Well, yeah, you can go where somebody loves you, but you're also going to starve while they're hugging you. 
because you can't make $35 an hour doing what you're doing. Can I just say that? We can't make that. Listen, I am a man of the people. I, I, I want you to make as much as you possibly can, but you've got to have some facts. It, I, 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 no, I'm not done with this. I, I, I want more thing. It, it would be like me early on as an author, first time author, going to a publisher going, I want a million dollar advance. And they would look at me and go, well, thanks, Ken, but you've never sold a book before in your life. I would go, they don't love me. <sighs> I mean, what are we doing here? All right. It's ridiculous. We need some facts. All right. This next one's our last one. It has 3.2 million views. Here we go. People want to know why the supply chain's breaking down. It's because workers like me are breaking down. I just had my hours cut on purpose, mind you. I don't want to be out there unloading crates for Amazon. You know what I really want to do? I want to write poems. I want to read Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud and explore the endless depths of the human experience. And you can't do that out there on the docks. Gotta never love You do that up here. The supply chain's breaking down because we're breaking down. We're breaking down our walls. A great softening is occurring. Maybe that's not such a bad thing. Nothing new is sweeter than with you. Wow. He throws the worker's helmet into the water. Throw that in the water. I'm not a litter bug. I love nature and I plan to spend more time in it from now on. All right, now this is fun. There's a guy having fun with this, but let me tell you what's so great about it. Why it had 3.2 million views beyond it being entertaining. He's absolutely right. A huge part of what we've seen in the Great Resignation from last year, call it let's call it April of 2021, to January of 2022. 30 million people have left their jobs. And the pandemic forced us to confront two things. It forced us to confront our mortality and it forced us to confront meaning. What really matters to us? And this dude's having some fun with this, but he's right. He doesn't want to just work for a paycheck on a dock. He wants to be creative. He wants to write all the things and he's nailing it. Really good stuff. I love it. All right. That music means I got to get out of here. But before I do remember this, you matter and you do have what it takes. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on. <laughs>